like to first off thank the Grievance Committee for this meeting on short notice and allowing me to present my case. The bottom line is that it is clear in my documents that I have met all of the criteria that has been asked of me by the women's program, and I expect them to honor their own written word. My coach, Dr. Michael Canales, has been doing all of the communicating via email uh, with the women's program, and he will be speaking on my behalf tonight. Go ahead, Michael. Um, I sought guidance from the women's program, and uh, documents 2A and 2B were provided to me by the women's program. And because Dominique exceeded the one event minimum requirement, the selection committee is nullifying its own criteria. The question that I pose to you on the panel is that, is that fair? So the message the committee is sending is that the written word of Mr. Warren and the women's program means absolutely nothing. It's clear that Great lengths were taken to produce the women's program report, which I received yesterday evening and reviewed. However, I feel that the effort has been misdirected and focuses on the wrong issues. If you filter out uh, the ideas of, of fairness and scores and gymnast names that were mentioned, you're left with three sheets of basically blank paper. And in the balance of time, I, I'm not going to uh, dismantle the entire document. However, each and every sentence of the key issues that are named uh, in that document can be argued because not one of the key issues pertains to the original criteria provided to me or Dominique. The whole women's program report dealt with criteria that was never communicated to me or my athlete. In fact, if you'll refer to document 2B, uh, this underlines the fact that Dominique met the first criteria. The women's program uh, is probably going to echo sentiments of, of fairness to all athletes, but fairness begins today with Dominique in this decision. This hearing is not about other athletes or scores, period. It's about the women's program adhering to the criteria they provided me and Dominique. And I ask, what's more fair, adhering to their original set of criteria or discarding Dominique and preventing her from competing despite the fact that she met the original criteria provided by the women's program. I invite the women's program to talk about scores all hearing long, but I'll tell you that scores are really irrelevant because they were not part of the criteria that was provided to us. The program's report states that a qualifying score of 14.0 was necessary for athletes competing on one event, but this criteria was made up after the fact. None of this, and I repeat, none of this was ever communicated to me or Dominique. Never. If it was, uh, don't you think that she probably would have stopped competing after her first event, which was vaulting, and she scored over a 14.0? But again, because Dominique exceeded the minimum requirement provided by the women's program, she was penalized by a set of rules that was never really established until after the meet. I presume that this isn't important since the selection committee states in writing that it is not bound by any criteria, which means that it can make up criteria and really not communicate it to anyone other than themselves, and I don't think that's fair. The athlete selection committee can discuss Dominique's placement on her events too. Not only is this completely irrelevant, but I'll entertain it. And I'll tell you this, that if there are only 21 competitors in this meet, a place of 14th or 15th place, appears to be a legitimate placement. So, what harm does it cause to accept Dominique's petition? If Marta Caroli, Steve Rybacki, and Kim Zemeskel burdett want to go down the road of fairness, they aren't being consistent because they aren't being fair to Dominique. Never once did Dominique's formal complaint address her track record. She's not relying on past glories, period. Not once was it mentioned but the women's program report cites it several times and makes a weak attempt to somehow use it as part of their newly fabricated criteria to reject her petition. I'd like to ask you another question. If there are more people in the stands, secondary to Dominique's participation in the Visa Championships, is that a good thing or a bad thing? One thing that I would also like to note is that USA Gymnastics media coordinator Leslie King informed journalists that Dominique was not competing at the 2006 Visa Championships after her grievance had been filed. So basically, the message she's sending to the media negates this entire hearing, 
and this entire process. Is that fair? The more appropriate answer would have been to say nothing or to simply state that the decision is pending. And while this wasn't a component of Dominique's relief, I deem it appropriate that an apology be dispensed and these journalists be contacted again to set the record straight. I'm tickled to know that the selection committee, at least portions of it, are on the line because this is the first communication that I've had with them despite numerous emails addressed to its constituents. Never once have I received an email from Mrs. Caroli, Mr. Rybacki, or Mrs. Zemeskel Burdett. If you turn your attention to document 2A, it suggests that one of the first, they have three objectives, actually four objectives that are pointed out. And they're saying that the first three objectives uh, are achieved. However, there is some secret subjective criteria that allows the committee to use undisclosed criteria. My interpretation of this is that in addition to the criteria that is objective, and that's communicated to athletes and coaches, there's a whole set of undisclosed hidden criteria which the committee makes up along the way. What I mean by this is that since a grievance has been filed, a new set of rules has been provided. Dominique and I have been led along. We have paid membership dues. We've accumulated travel expenses, economical and emotional costs. All the while, Dominique has continued to train since the U.S. Classic along her quest to compete. And now we find out that we've been chasing a phantom. The Athlete Selection Committee has made us look foolish, and this is what Marta Caroli, Steve Rybacki, Kim Zemeskel Burdett, Kathy Kelly, and Gary Warren consider fair to its athletes. Dominique and I refuse to accept this convoluted and unclear decision. This is not about athletes or scores. Quite simply, it's whether or not the Athlete Selection Committee will follow through with their written criteria or not. It's my contention, and I think that you'll agree, that decisions like this one made by the Selection Committee are hurtful to gymnastics, its enthusiasts, and its athletes.